When you open a new empty project in Logic, you'll be presented with a box asking to create a new track. That's because you have to have at least one track open to do anything useful in Logic. And as you can see, there are a number of options that we'll look at in just a moment, but for now, I'll just go ahead and create an audio track. So now we're in the main Arrange window, where you'll probably spend the majority of your time in Logic. So let's make another new track. There are a couple of ways to do this. You can duplicate an existing track with all its settings and plugins with this button here. To demonstrate that, I'll just quickly change some settings and add a plugin to this track. And as you can see, my duplicated track has the exact same settings as the old one. To create a new track from scratch, you can hit this plus button. And let's have a look at the options that presents us with. First up, we can choose from three different types of track, audio, software instrument, or external MIDI. An audio track lets you record and play back audio files. Those might include sounds recorded from microphones, or guitars may be plugged directly into your interface, or maybe just audio samples that you've downloaded from the internet. A software instrument track allows you to load virtual instruments inside the computer and then to program or play in data which tells them what notes to play. That data is known as MIDI data and we're going to look at manipulating it later on. Logic ships with loads of really great software instruments such as synthesizers, drum machines and sample playback instruments. The final option, external MIDI, refers to a setup that we're not going to cover in these tutorials as it's less widely used. But essentially this allows you to send MIDI data out of Logic and into some external hardware. So if you owned a hardware synthesizer for example, you could program the notes it plays using this kind of track. So now let's take a look at this next set of options for an audio track. First up there's the format, which can be mono, stereo or surround. A mono audio track allows you to record or playback a single stream of audio. So for example, if you're recording a guitar directly into the computer, that would come in as a mono audio stream. Likewise, if you're recording with a microphone, chances are you're recording in mono, unless you have a special stereo microphone. Note that if you select mono, you can only choose one input from your sound card or audio interface. A stereo track allows you to record and playback stereo sounds, and those are made up of two audio streams, one for each speaker. You might choose this option if you're recording with a pair of microphones to get a stereo signal, or if you're planning to listen to or edit stereo audio. For example, if you are sampling from an existing song, because of course almost all records since the late 60s have been recorded and mixed in stereo. Finally, you can choose a surround track, which, you guessed it, allows you to mix in full surround sound. That's useful if you're mixing sound for a movie or maybe for an enhanced surround sound CD. Next, you can choose the inputs and outputs of your track. If you're going to be recording audio onto this track, you can select the input on your audio interface that you're going to use here. And this, like your choice of outputs, can be changed easily later, so don't worry too much if you're not sure which input to choose right now. If you want to create multiple new tracks of the same type, you can do that by typing a number in the box up here. And if that's what you're doing, you can have Logic automatically set the inputs in an ascending manner. So in other words, your first track would use input 1, your second track would use input 2, your third track input 3, etc. And the same can be done with the outputs, although in most cases you'll probably want your output to remain the normal stereo output. You can also set your track to be immediately enabled for input or record enabled. Don't worry, we're going to look at what those mean in the next video. But for now, be secure in the knowledge that this is easily changed on any track at any time. 
so there's no problem if you don't check this now, you can always enable it later. If you're creating a software instrument track, you won't need to worry about any of those input options because a software instrument doesn't require any input from the real world like a microphone or a guitar. All the sounds that they create are generated within the computer, so as a result there's no input options for a software instrument track. And of course you can change the output, but normally you want that to remain the default stereo output so you can hear it on your monitor speakers or headphones. So let's go ahead and create an audio track. And we're going to pick up with this in the next video.